Hello again and welcome. There's a member up on EEV blog that goes by the name of Fungus. Recently he's been posting about some low-cost meters and that brought up these meters that Harbor Freight offers for free with purchase. They've changed the design on these and you can see this is the latest design and it's Mark 250 volts DC max, 250 volts AC. This is an earlier design and you can see these were marked for 1000 volts DC and 750 volts AC. On the back of the new meter do not test voltages over 250 volts. So I had ran this particular meter up to a thousand volts before. Didn't have any issues with it. What he was asking is if these meters could actually survive at higher voltages. He also wanted to know if the hardware changed between these two meters when they changed the voltage rating. He also made this kind of odd statement which was a 2000 count meter, which these happen to be, should be able to read 2000 volts. I don't really understand that comment. It would be like stating that uh, this is a 50,000 count meters, so that should be able to display 50,000 volts. Obviously, I don't think anybody's going to expect that. So what I'd like to do today is just run these meters with 2,000 volts DC applied. We'll have all the meters set to their highest DC volt range. For fun, we're going to run this 121GW as well as my UT90A. This meter has been damaged several times, but it is still functional. This is production number two, and if you watch my reviews on the 121GW, this is the meter that went through all of the testing. You can hear the switch doesn't really click anymore. Uh, this meter has been damaged, but it still does work in the DC voltage mode. So I've seen videos where people have tried to use insulation testers to verify the high voltage ratings of the meters. The input impedance of these meters is low enough that it loads down those insulation testers so they don't actually show them running at the high voltage because they fold back. This power supply is able to put out enough current that it's not going to fold back when we run these things up to 2 kilovolts. Originally I was just going to run this test off camera and what ended up happening is I was running this one. It got up to about 1.4 kV and it arced over and it damaged the meter so this meter no longer turns on. What we'll be doing is connecting this back up to our power supply and I'll go ahead and sweep it up again. It's going to break down and then we'll take this thing apart and I'll show you what it looks like. You can see that over time they've continued to reduce the manufacturing cost of these meters. Comes at a price, of course, now the meter will no longer survive 2,000 volts. So I think what I'd like to do, before we finish up this video, is run this thing across our half cycle line simulator. Again, normally with the higher class meters that I test, we can't run that. And that's because the way that it works, it basically requires that the meters break down. And a lot of the upper end meters won't break down with this generator, so there's no reason to ever test with this. It's been a while, so again, let me explain the way that this works. 
This lower transient generator puts out a high voltage, but it's at a very low energy. Where this top generator puts out a very high energy-ish, <laughs> but at a very low voltage. So this thing can put out about 600 joules versus this generator putting out about 20 joules. So what ends up happening is if the meter breaks down and we get an arc, so we get this low impedance path, that will trigger up this generator here, which will feed that low impedance path. That's why we don't need a high voltage. Anyway, that'll feed into that arc and we can get a fair amount of damage. Basically what I was trying to do with this generator is mimic the energy available in a half of a cycle on an AC main. It's not a lot of energy, but it'll typically do enough damage to these meters where we can get an idea how they may behave with a higher energy transient like the IEC surge test. So again, we're going to have the meter just set to its DC voltage mode. I've got this meter buttoned up, so if the pressure shock is enough, maybe we can crack the case open. We'll see what happens. Well, it didn't look like that second hit did as much damage as the first. Let's just see what it looks like on the inside. You can see we're arced up in this area right here. We may find there's not a lot more damage up in that area that initially broke over. You can see just a little bit more down here. Again, this is where it initially broke over up here. But we can see down here is where most of the damage has occurred now. It does appear from these tests that the new Harbor Freight Meter can't withstand the same voltage levels that the older versions that I have will. But again, they do mark the meter now. Do not test over 250 volts. And of course, that's marked on the front of the meter as well. So I doubt very many people are going to expect this to survive to 2,000 volts. I think that's going to be it for this video. I hope you enjoyed it. Until the next video. Later.